Now that we've talked about why you should learn Python 3 and the different uses for Python, and we discussed a little bit about what Python is as a programming language, it's finally time for us to install Python onto our machine and install the editors that we will be using to program in Python. I'm running Windows 10 right now, but I will have the instructions for installing on Mac OS and Linux as well. But the instructions should be relatively similar for all operating systems. To get started, go ahead and open up a web browser and go over to python.org. We're going to go over to the download section here, and you'll see at the top here it already detects which operating system I'm on. And then below the download button, you will see that there's also a couple of links for the other operating systems where you can download the correct program to install Python on your machine. By default on Linux, as far as I remember, Python is already installed, but it is Python 2. We're going to be using Python 3 for this series, and I'm going to be using the latest version, 3.9.1. I'm going to go ahead and click on this download link, and you'll see that it already downloads the correct file for my operating system, and it is a 64-bit because that's what I'm running. I'm going to go ahead and open up the installer, and you'll see that you might want to change a couple of things before you actually go ahead and click install now. For one, you want to make sure that you choose uh, whether or not you want to install Python for all of the users or just the current user. I'm going to install it for everything. And then this is important if you want to run it on Linux or Mac or even Windows, is you want to add Python 3.9 to the path. This will allow us to execute Python from the terminal or the command prompt, depending on the operating system, without having to use the actual Python program that it will install. I'm going to go into Customize Installation, just so that we can see the other things that are going to be installed with Python. All of these are checked by default, but I always like to make sure just in case they decide to change anything in the future. PIP is the program that you use to install different libraries for Python 3. So you definitely want to have that checked because that'll be important if you want to use libraries or modules in Python, which is very important to program in it. I'm going to have tkinter installed, which is this tcl slash tk and idle checkbox. tkinter is essentially a GUI library that allows you to create graphical user interfaces in Python 3, which will be good if you want to practice making actual software with Python. The rest of these I'm going to keep checked too. I just like I mentioned before, always check them to make sure that I have them installed. So I'm going to hit next and then this is going to give me some advanced options. I'm just going to hit install. It will install Python. Now that the setup was successful I'm going to hit close and then that is Python installed on our machine. Now that we've ran the installer and it says that it was installed, let's go ahead and ensure that Python was installed successfully on our machine. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to go and open up the command prompt or PowerShell. Once I have this opened, I'm going to click it, and then to run Python on Windows, I'm just going to type in Python. If this prompt comes up, you can see that Python 3.9.1 was successfully installed. And this is the prompt to be able to test out individual commands in Python. To go ahead and exit this prompt, type in quit. Oops. Go ahead and type in quit with an open and close parentheses. This will call the quit function. When you hit enter, you can see that it brings us back to the Windows command prompt. On Linux and Mac, since I mentioned before that usually Python 2 is installed, you need to ensure that you're running Python 3 because it'll make a difference in how you execute your scripts. To run Python 3, just type in Python 3, and then you'll hit enter, and then it should bring up the same prompt that I had on Windows. Python 3 does come with an editor that you can use to execute your Python programs, and if you do want to use this editor, this will work perfectly fine for what we will be doing in this series, and it should work perfectly fine for what you want to do in the future. On Windows, I'm going to search for idle, and you'll see that it will come up down here, idle Python 3.9. It's showing 3.7 for me because I also have 3.7 installed on my machine. When I go ahead and open this, you'll see that this comes up with the same prompt that was on the command prompt or the terminal, depending on which operating system you're on. This is great because we can put in individual commands, but say we want to actually run full programs with more than one command at a time. We can do that by opening a new file with file, 
new file or control N and you'll see that this new window with just a blank text editor will come up. I'm going to go ahead and increase the font size for you guys right now. Now that my font size has been increased, we want to make sure that we save a file and I'm going to save this as hello. Now Python files by default are saved in a .py file extension. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop as hello.py and you'll see that it will automatically save as the Python type. So I hit save. Now that I have this file saved, I can go ahead and we can execute our very first program in Python 3. When every programmer learns a new programming language, usually the first program that they will write is a hello world. And it is very simple, it is just you printing out the message, hello world, to the console. You can do this in Python by calling the print function, this is print with an open parentheses, and then make sure that you use quotations to print out hello world or any message that you want, but it has to start and end with a quotation mark. And then to run this using idle, you can go here to the run tab and then run module, or you can press F5. You'll see that the shell will come up on top of the editor, and our message hello world will be printed to the prompt. I will be using Visual Studio Code as my editor for the rest of this series, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install it yourself in case that you wanted to follow along with me. Go ahead and go to code.visualstudio.com, this is a Microsoft product, and you'll see in the same format that Python's website had, this will automatically detect which operating system you're on. It does run on Mac OS and Linux, and you can download the correct file that you need to install it from here depending on your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click download for Windows. You'll see that it will bring me to a new window and that the setup is installing or downloading right now. I'm going to go ahead and open up the setup here. It will ask me to accept the agreement. You're going to hit yes. This is just where it's going to install. I'm going to leave it in the default location. And then this will show where it wants to install on the start menu for Windows specifically. I'm just going to hit next. And then these are the additional options that you want to take a look at just in case. I'm going to add it to the path and that is checked by default. I'm not going to create a desktop icon because I don't want to have an icon on my desktop but if you do want to do that then that would you would check that. I am however going to check both of these add open with code actions to the Windows Explorer file context menu and the directory context menu. This will just allow me to open up folders in Visual Studio Code right from the Windows Explorer rather than having to open up the application and then open them myself. Hit next and then hit install and this will install for you on the machine. Once it's installed you'll see that there is an option to launch Visual Studio Code and it is checked. I went ahead and hit the finish button to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code on my computer. Yours is going to look a little bit different if you've installed it for the first time. The reason mine looks like this is because I have settings sync turned on, so it pulled settings from another Visual Studio Code on a different computer that I have it installed on. To go ahead and emulate my Visual Studio Code, go ahead and go to the extensions tab which is at the bottom left of the sidebar. The theme that I have installed is called One Dark, and you'll see that here it's called One Dark Pro and it's by Binaryify. Go ahead and download that and hit set color theme. And then to run Python on Visual Studio Code to give you those tools, you're going to want to head and install this Python extension from Microsoft. And this will install all of the tools that you'll need. And it should install everything that you'll need to run Python in Visual Studio Code. To go ahead and open up a new file in Visual Studio Code, you can go ahead and double click this bar here or if you have a tab open double click to the right of it or do file new file or control N. I'm going to go ahead and save this file as a Python file so I'm going to do control S on Windows or command S on Mac and I'm going to go ahead and go to my desktop and save this as hello.py that is the default Python file extension hit save and then to run our first program you're gonna see that it has detected that I have a Python file open up and it's gonna probably say that no Python interpreter is selected I'm gonna hit select Python interpreter and it should by default find where the path is 
I'm gonna hit Python 3.9.1 and then it will say that the pylon is not installed so I'm gonna hit install on this and let this install. Once pylon has been installed I'm gonna go ahead and clear my terminal screen and it should have opened up a new terminal in Visual Studio Code which is an awesome feature. If you don't have a terminal on I think every operating system you're gonna hit control and then the tilde button which on QWERTY is the button under the escape key on your keyboard that should open up a new terminal usually when someone learns a new programming language the first program that they will write is called a hello world program where you will output the message hello world to the terminal so to write that in Python 3 you're going to type in print with open parentheses and close parentheses inside of the parentheses you're going to use quotes and you can see Visual Studio Code will automatically wrap the quotes around the cursor and then type in whatever message you want my case it's going to be hello world because it is a hello world program after all to run the file in Visual Studio Code you can hit this green play button and you'll see that it will run in the terminal and you can see the output down here is hello world like we said another option is to go ahead and run the Python command and then type in the name of the file. To do this, make sure that you are in your directory that your Python file was saved in. In my case, I'm not, I am in a separate directory, but to do it, you would call Python, or if you're on Mac or Linux, Python 3, and then the name of your file, which in my case is hello.py. Another popular editor that people use to program in Python 3 is called PyCharm and it's made by the JetBrains team. They have a wide variety of different IDEs or integrated development environments which is what PyCharm is for a lot of different programming languages. I do really enjoy PyCharm but for this series I don't think it's necessary for me because usually I use PyCharm for bigger projects or applications that I'm using Python for. To go ahead and download it, go to www.jetbrains.com, go over to the Developer Tools tab, and you'll see a list of their IDEs. The one we are looking for is PyCharm. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you will see that there is a professional or a community edition. That just means that you can either pay a subscription to get a more fully featured PyCharm IDE or you can download the community edition which is usually more than enough for anyone starting off or just using it in an individual environment. Go ahead and click download and it will bring you to the professional or community choice. I'm going to download the community because that's what you guys probably will be doing. Once it's downloaded go ahead and open up the installer Go ahead and click next and this will choose where you want it to install. I will just leave it default and then here are the installation options that you can do. I am going to not create any desktop shortcut. I'm not going to create a open folder as project but if you do want to do that you can. You can also create associations to the .py file extension so that it will know to open it up in PyCharm. And then you can update your path variable which will add the launchers directory to the path so that you can run it from the terminal or the command prompt. I'm going to leave all of these blank, but you can choose what you want to better suit your needs. Hit next, and then just hit install. This will choose what start menu folder on Windows you want it to be. I'm just going to leave it default and let it install. Once it's been installed, you can either check this box to run it immediately after the installer to finish setting it up, or you can just hit finish, and that's what I'm going to do, and I will open up PyCharm separately. Once you open up PyCharm for the first time, you'll see this window pop up. It will ask you if you have any settings to import. I don't, but if you do, or if I were to, you would find the directory that the settings file was in, and then you would import it through there. Go ahead and hit OK and then it will load PyCharm. You'll see by default it will come up with this Welcome to PyCharm screen where you can make a new project, open one, or get it from version control. I personally like to run the JetBrains IDEs in light theme because I think the light theme is better than the dark theme. To do that, go ahead and go to Customize and then choose the theme that you want. I'm going to choose IntelliJ Light. 
I'm going to then change my font size to 15 in the editor font. If you are colorblind, you can change the colors here with this checkbox, and then you can change your key map depending on what you're used to. If you've used Emacs or Sublime Text or just your operating system, you can do that here. Go back to the projects pane and then open up a new project. I'm going to call this Hello World. This is the name of my project that I want to create, and by default, it will install in the PyCharm projects directory on your operating system. By default, this virtual environment thing is checked here, but for this series, we're going to actually use the interpreter that we installed earlier. You can go ahead and select this button here that says previously configured interpreter, and then you'll see that there is no interpreter and there's nothing here to select. Go to the three dots, go down to system interpreter and then by default if you installed it in the default location it will automatically detect where the interpreter is installed and it will select it. Go ahead and hit OK and then you'll see that there is a checkbox down here that says create a main.py welcome script. I will have that checked and I will hit create. By default this tips thing will come up. If you want to have it then just hit next tip and you can look at them. I don't want to, I don't need them, so I'm going to hit don't show tips and close. This is the main.py file that is automatically installed. I'm going to hit control A and delete everything and we're going to start from scratch by writing our very first Python file. When learning a new programming language, a lot of people will do a classic hello world program which will print the message hello world to the command prompt or the terminal. To do this in Python 3, you're going to type in print and open up parentheses and then inside put quotes and you will see that the quotes and the parentheses will automatically wrap around the cursor. I'm going to type in my message. In this case, it is hello world. You can do whatever you want as long as it is inside of those quotation marks. And then you will see that I am going to hit this green play button in the top bar. Once you do that, it will open up a window down here where your program will get executed and the output is hello world. And then it says we have an exit code of zero. That just means that nothing went wrong. Now that we've installed the Python interpreter on our computer and we have the editor that we are going to use to program in Python, we can finally begin to actually program in Python. In this next video of the series, we will look at variables in Python and we will start to use the basic data types that Python gives to us.